In this video, we're going to take a look at the original aluminum Cobra body that used to be on Dave Phelan's 289 competition car. Now you might ask, why just the body? Well, the story is, the rest of the original Cobra has since been restored, and during the restoration, the restorer obtained an aluminum body from Shelby and put a new body on the car. And the original body ended up in the Brothers Collection. And that's why we're bringing it to you on Muscle Car of the Week. I think the thing that, uh, that, I, that I'm impressed with most is that you're seeing a body that is off a frame, so it, it, you're seeing the thing is, is, is not a complete car any longer, but an incomplete car, but just the, just the, the ability to walk around it, pick it up, and, and feel just exactly how light aluminum really is and why these cars were, were so, so, so quick because they were so light. And that lightness transfers along with 400 horsepower to a car that uh, accelerates pretty quickly. It was a, it was a full competition. Uh, Randy Hilton had actually bought it uh, apparently uh, originally. It wasn't a full competition originally, and then he took it back to the factory after a couple of weeks of purchasing it, and they turned it into a full competition. And the full competition had, uh, they put the Webers on it, the full Webers on it, uh, four downdraft Webers, uh, the, the competition uh, air scoop. But it was really crucial to this car because it had the Webers sitting right here. And so your Webers were your Webers were a carburetor that didn't have any kind of air filter over the top of them. They were just straight right there. And you had this little metal shield right here in front that stopped the gravel and stuff from coming down and dumping into the, directly into the carburetor. They had the air scoops down in the front end, which you can't see now, of course, but they had the scoops going, uh, they were about six inches wide, and they scooped right up into the, you know, the front disc, connected right up into the disc. Uh, full competition bar. Uh, which to, by today's SCCA standards was pretty minimal. It was a pretty small bar. There wasn't much there to protect you, really, if you turned it over. You didn't have a roll cage or anything around you. Nothing. I mean, if you got hit from the side, you were completely unprotected. There was nothing there. There was just simply that roll cage to protect you in case you went over. But any side stuff or front stuff or anything, you were at the mercy of uh, the impact for sure. You've got, the, you've got just the basics here. That's all you need. I mean, I, as I look at the front of it, you think about it. Why do I need a grill in here when I can just have an opening here, a huge opening right here for the, uh, for the radiator that cools a massive radiator inside of it? And then also the oil cooler sat right down here, down below too. So you've got your oil cooler sitting right here too. So that's both, that's both functional and I think that what's, what's missing here, the only thing that's missing uh, in terms of the front, of course you had the, the headlights here that didn't, I mean they, were, they, were, they had to be functional and uh, you had tape on them when you, you taped them up during the, during the race uh, so that if they did, they did crack or you did break them they wouldn't shatter all over the place. But really it was, it was just kind of a, of a street car. But now that you look at it you realize just exactly what it is in terms of a, just a straight functional car. It had originally, it had the, uh, the brake ducts were down here hooked up, which uh, forced air into the front disc brakes and uh, helped cool the brakes during, uh, during the braking going down into, you know, moving it down from 140 down to 10 miles an hour or whatever it is during a 30 minute race. As you can see, uh, the full lipped uh, fenders here, the fender wells were uh, widened for the uh, wider tires and they took all of the tires. The tires were right at the edge. There was a lot of tire on this car and um, try to think, of course had competition uh, seat belts in it. Um, suspension was a lot stiffer, had the Coney shocks on it, all stiffened up. Had the, uh, of course, the, you know, the Jaguar IRS in it. Um, Leaf spring in the front, which they later, later changed to fully independent on the 427s, but the, was a leaf on the front. Uh, car, I mean, when you drove it on a regular road, which I did occasionally out where I was working on it, was, it was really rough. I mean, it would compress your back. 
So it was a very stiff car, and when you put the when you put the clutch in, you knew every time you put that clutch in, you were doing a lot of work just to get that clutch in there. Same with the steering, no power steering, nothing. And then the doors, you don't need anything in a door. I mean, there's no window there or anything. So when you when you when you open the doors, I mean, the door is just a just something that allows you to get in the car, and that's its only function for a race car. That's it. There was nothing else in it. I mean, it was a lightweight car. I mean, they had this, this lightweight seats, everything else, no, nothing in it, no creature comforts, no heater, no, no windshield wipers, no, not everything. It was stripped down to just, I think they weighed it in. We weighed it in at around 2,100 pounds, I think. And that might have been with me sitting in it. I don't know. I can't remember now. But one way or the other, 21, 22, 23, with 400 horsepower in there, with a 289 engine that's revving to around 7 to 7.5, it was a, it was a scream, and I ran against 427s, and this car would stay with a 427. It was, in fact, it was faster out of a corner than a 427 was. 427 got you a little bit. You start getting up into the higher speeds, it, it you know, started to move away with the torque, but the engine itself was a pretty fantastic engine, really, when you got right down to it. They did a great job at the factory. Fuel cell? Forget it. There was no fuel cells in these things. They were just, you were just had, you had, you know, 25 gallons of fuel. You're sitting here. Here's 25 gallons of fuel sitting right behind you. If you went over, that was it. 25 gallons were going all over the place. So uh, you didn't really want to turn it over, that's for sure. So, I mean, overall, you're just talking about just a, a, a functional piece of a body on a, on a, on a, on a frame that the only purpose it's built for is speed. That's it. That's the only thing it's, it's made for. So everything else is off of it. Uh, any of the road, the, the road accessories are gone from it. But it's, it still looks like it's a road machine, but in essence, it's a, it's a, it, was a, it was built to, to be a race car, and that's it. And everything else was superfluous.